Welcome back. Today I will be explaining conditionals. What I have here is the basic setup of our program and including the headers, the main function, I define a variable with no need to initialize it because I have the user define what value it has and I have something so that the user knows what it's defining. And here's where we get into the code. I'll start off with the if statement. This is just if and then a uh, parentheses with a condition that needs to be met and then the code to execute if this is true. So we have bar equals equals four. This equals equals is checking the value to see if bar equals 4 instead of setting the value of var to be 4 as one single equals would be. So with that this basically returns boolean value of true or false. If this is true then execute this code. If this is false skip the code and jump down here. And what we want the code to be is C out correct and when we compile and run this we enter 4 tells us that we're correct if we run it again we enter 2 it doesn't do anything we probably want to say that we're wrong so what we can do is say else and then squiggly brackets C out wrong and end squiggly brackets and if we run this then we type in 2 we're wrong say for some reason we wanted another value here of say 2 if we wanted 2 to have a different response we can have another if here but to link all these together so it's all one group of an if then else statement then what we have is else if which then has the same conditions of an if bar equals two then C out and then we can say invalid basically having the same thing as this as the if except this else links them all together here you could have another value of else if bar equals three or something and you can have as many as you want just add down right here and they use the else if here because we link them because here bar can only equal four or two or three it can't equal both four and two so once it returns a true value here it doesn't even need to check if this is true it just jumps down to the bottom after it's all done to save time so that the execution of the program will be more smooth and less time consuming. The second conditional that I would like to explain is the while. Basically, while something is true, execute the code. So if we want to do this until they have the right answer, then we can say while, and then similar to the if statement while bar except here instead of equaling for we want it to not equal for so we can have not equal which is exclamation point equal sign and then for for the value we want it to not equal so while it does not equal for it will run through this code and then right here we need a squiggly bracket and then down here we need a squiggly bracket and then 
while var does not equal for, we will execute this code in between. And that will happen as many times as necessary. So if we run this, we have two invalid. So it prompts us again, zero. Wrong, we get four. Correct, and then it doesn't prompt us anymore. It's just waiting for this last one. So, that is basically how the while loop works. The last one that I would like to quickly explain is the for loop. The for loop is basically for, then in parentheses again, and then in brackets what we want to happen. And what we have to do is we have to have a variable which will be incremented and we can use an existing one or we can start a new one which I will show here so if we have int i and then we have to initialize it equals we'll start with one and then a semicolon here and then the condition that we want to be true which is similar to this we have i is less than 5 and then a semicolon and then we want our increment so what we do is have i equals i plus 1 so every time it loops back it will increment i to be the value of i plus 1 so that is our increment. Since this is basically the default, we can just change this to i++ or plus plus i. There is a difference between the two, but I do not fully understand what the difference is. So either way really works, and for now we'll get the same purpose accomplished. And then in here, we want to execute whatever we want to do. So we can see out i to show it what it's basically doing. And if we compile and run this, we get first answer 4. And then here, it starts at 1. 1 is less than 5. So go down here, execute the code. It displays 1. Then it goes back up, checks. Is i still less than 5? Yes, it's 1. So we're going to increment it by 1, which basically the plus plus i equals really doesn't matter if you use i equals i plus 1. Same purpose gets accomplished. So then it now equals 2. Goes back down, displays 2. Continues that until it gets to be 4. 4 increments here and then checks um, it checks that now it's 5 so it then checks is 5 less than 5 no it's not so then it stops execution goes down to the end of this and drops down here and is now being prompted for bar which is just there to wait and that is basically the for loop. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.